programming games in Rust, dark themes for all your favorite apps, and the very best Flappy Bird implementation that you will ever see, ever. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. And my hoodie this week is from the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. And this is in honor of the Eras Tour coming to movie theaters in the US. And you guys, you guys, did you see Beyonce showed up at the premiere? Yeah? Tay and Queen V, my two faves together. I'm living for this moment. I, I love it, and I, I can't wait to go to the movie theater and like, cry and scream for like three and a half hours. All right, let's get into stuff that you actually care about, but thank you for indulging me. All right, first up, just a reminder that GitHub Universe is less than a month away. It is taking place on November 8th and 9th in the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in beautiful San Francisco, California. And uh, you can join us online as well. So we'd love to see you in person, but you can also join us online. You can head over to githubuniverse.com for all the details. If you are there in person and you see me, please say hello. I, I, love, I love seeing people in person and, and talking with them. Moving on, I wanna talk a little bit about a really important topic that doesn't get enough attention in the developer ecosystem, and that is accessibility. Lots of different types of people use and interact with your code and making code and coding tools that are accessible is something that a lot of us really don't spend enough time on. But could AI help? Well, mm, here's what Ed Summers, who leads accessibility at GitHub, and Jesse Dugas wanted to find out. So they wrote a really great blog post where they investigated whether or not, with the help of a smart foundational prompt, something like GitHub Copilot Chat could offer some best practices for creating more accessible code. And the results are pretty good, uh, although there's definitely room for improvement. But uh, they also point out in their blog post that it is not reasonable to expect generative AI to deliver the best responses and to generate perfectly performant code you know, it's a co-pilot, it's not doing it for you. But I really think this is an interesting addition to the accessibility tool set. And um, I love that this topic is getting more attention and you can find more details on this in the blog post and description. Moving on to some launch celebrations, I wanted to first of all congratulate our pal, B. Dougie, on the product hunt launch of OpenSauce, which is his tool for maintainers by maintainers. And it's designed to help you optimize your open source project with deep insights. And seriously, if you have an open source project, You've got to check out Open Source. It's fantastic. It also has the greatest URL ever, which is opensauce.pizza. Right? Right? How good is that? How good is that? Opensauce.pizza. I've got that link down below. Congrats, B Dougie. And I also want to give congratulations to the Payload CMS team on the release of Payload 2.0. And Payload is a CMS slash app framework that's built in TypeScript and is open source. And I've played with it a little bit because I'm a sucker for a CMS and an app framework, and it's really, really cool. Uh, version 2.0 brings in Postgres support, Byte support, and updates to the admin UI and text editor, and it's all in a monorepo now. It's really great. I want to give congrats to the Payload team on this one. I've also got a link to their project and their GitHub repo in the show notes and the description. Now, we talk a lot about games here on the download, but this one is super cool, and it's called Oort, O-O-R-T, and it's a programming game where you write Rust code to control a fleet of spaceships, and your code is responsible for the engines, weapons, radar, and communications of ships, ranging from like tiny missiles to massive cruisers. And the whole thing is super cool. You only need basic Rust knowledge to play it. Um, I love this, so I've got a link to the game and the GitHub repo in the show notes. This is really great. And speaking of really cool things, let's get into this week's Project Spotlight. So each week I find a project on GitHub to spotlight, and this week my choice is one that has actually been with us for a solid decade. And it's topical because this is October and Halloween's around the corner. That's right, my pick is Dracula theme. Now this is a fantastic dark color theme and it started out as something that Zeno Rocha built for Z Shell, but it now has 355 different official variants for all types of apps and services. And Dracula is a theme that I've used over the years in my terminal, my IDE, I've used it in Slack, like all kinds of places, Telegram. And it's got over 21,000 stars on GitHub. It has more than 734 contributors. There are spinoffs, there are variants. It's inspired so many great things. And I wanna just give my congrats to Zeno and everybody who has worked on Dracula to 10 more years. And I just think this is great. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so speaking of 10 years, about 10 years ago, a little game called Flappy Bird stole our collective hearts and then it disappeared after like a whirlwind 28 days of viral fame. 
but its legacy lives on and Floppy Bird or Floppy Bird-like games have popped up on every platform of demand. But I don't think that I've ever anticipated seeing Floppy Bird somewhere this cool. And that is by a developer, Nolan, who goes by E-I-E-I-O, who made a game called Flappy Dirt, and it is Flappy Bird inside Mac OS Finder. Yes, this is real. So on their blog, EIEIO lays out how they came up with the idea and the various prototypes, a little bit of Python, a touch of Apple script, and finally, success. I'm gonna be completely candid. This is one of the greatest things I've seen weeks and weeks on the internet. Even better, the source codes on GitHub, but this is so innovative and it's so creative. You really need to check out some of EIEIO's other work. Um, they also put Wordle in the Firefox address bar. Um, so I've got their website linked um, down below too, but this is really fantastic um, and so innovative. And in the blog post, uh, they mention the possibility of maybe building Tetris in the Mac OS Finder. We really need people on this because that would be amazing. Like, can you imagine just being able to like play Tetris in the Mac OS Finder? Like, if I were in high school, this is what I would do all day when I would like be telling like my teachers, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm doing schoolwork. No, I'm playing Tetris in the Finder and, and you can't stop me. That's gonna do it for me this week. If, uh, if you have uh, any thoughts on like where you would like to see a, a game pop up, let me know in the comments or let us know your thoughts on any other story this week. If you like this episode, go ahead and give us a like on YouTube because it helps the algorithm out. And uh, go ahead and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. I'm going to be out next week because I'm going to be at all things open, but uh, see you next time.